Have you ever seen zombies like this? Their tongues can extend up to 10 meters. They can suck the blood out of someone in just 3 seconds by poking them. And this particular zombie has half of its head chopped off. Yet it can still move freely and listen for any signs of life. Not to mention this zombie with eyes as big as brass bells. Just looking at it makes your legs weak. And all of these zombies are appearing in this apartment building. You're not mistaken. In this episode, we bring you the incredibly popular zombie-themed TV series, Sweet Home. This boy is named Hyun Su. He thinks about suicide every day, but he has never had the courage to go through with it. One night, Hyun Su is awakened by the sound of the telephone ringing. It's the delivery person leaving a package outside his door. Hyun Su goes to pick it up, only to find chaos outside his door. He cautiously looks towards his neighbor's apartment. Suddenly, a cat's head rolls out. Before he can even be surprised, a blood-soaked hand grabs the cat's head and takes it back. Without thinking, Hyun Su dashed home in a 100-meter sprint. He jumps on his bed and pulls the covers over himself, pretending he didn't see anything. Unfortunately, the sound of high heels soon echoes from outside the door. The doorbell rings. A trembling woman is pleading for help outside the door, saying she just returned home and her cat is missing. The floor is covered in blood. After witnessing the scene just now, Hyun Su is too terrified to open the door. He tries to call the police for help. But all he hears on the other end is a piercing noise. No matter how many times he dials, he can't get through. The woman outside continues to plead for help. Looking pitiful, Hyun Su is left with no choice but to make a demand. <laughs> However, his request completely enrages the woman outside. Her face contorts into a horrifying expression, and she starts to bleed profusely from her nose while continuously banging on the door. Hyun Su is terrified. But then music starts playing from another floor in the building. The woman outside is immediately drawn towards the sound, worried that she might harm someone else. Hyun Su grabs a stick and rushes out of his apartment. Unfortunately, the woman is already gone. The mutated woman arrives on an upper floor of the building. Ji Su, a resident living upstairs, is still contemplating how to apologize to someone when she is terrified by the woman's monstrous appearance. She doesn't dare to open the door. The woman starts violently banging on the door. Luckily, the door holds up and she eventually leaves. Jisoo grabs a baseball bat and ventures outside to investigate. Soon after, she encounters a drunken man muttering to himself at the staircase. The drunkard drops his bottle on the ground. Jisoo looks back and sees the drunkard's nose bleeding, his face contorting. He transforms right before her eyes into a monster. In a critical moment, a man wielding a samurai sword charges forward and slices off half of the drunkard's head, saving a petrified Jisoo. Meanwhile, Hyun Su opens the curtains and looks outside. The sight is enough to fill one with despair. He quickly searches the internet to find out what is happening. Some say it's a curse. To survive in this curse, they say you need. As he stares at the web page that shows no internet connection, Hyun Su lets out a helpless laugh. At that moment, his stomach grumbles loudly. He remembers the instant noodles placed by the door. After giving himself a pep talk, Hyun Su opens the door. But the scene outside makes his scalp tingle. A pair of horrifying hands claws at the door frame. The monster moves in that direction. Hyun Su covers his mouth tightly, afraid to make a sound, because the monster only has half a head. It can't see and relies on sound to detect its surroundings. Hyun Su notices a stick on the floor and thinks of picking it up for self-defense. But the monster's ears are incredibly sensitive. With just the slightest movement, it swiftly turns around and prepares to attack. Fortunately, the attack doesn't land on Hyun Su. He trembles, huddled in a corner, watching the monster gradually move towards the door. Monster is gone. Hyun Su quickly closes the door again. He feels helpless, realizing that he will either be killed by the monsters or become one of them in the end. Paradoxically, Hyun Su finds the courage to commit suicide. He opens the window, only to see a man using a rope to escape from the building below. The man intends to find food for his family outside. His two children stand by the window, crying. The man quickly warns them not to make any noise, as it might attract the monsters. However, before he finishes speaking, a large-eyed monster reaches up from below. The man panics, trying to evade it but ends up falling from the upper floor. Hyun Su is terrified. He quickly closes the window and retreats into a corner, pretending nothing happened. However, the cries for help from the two children downstairs are painfully clear. The large-eyed monster has already reached in through the window. Soon to kill two children, Hyun Su finally can't hold back any longer and takes action. The monster is instantly enraged and abandons the two children. Rushing upstairs, Hyun Su grabs a wooden stick and, 
as the monster charges in, thrusts it into its eye. Unfortunately this doesn't work at all. The monster coils around Hyunsu like a snake. As the monster constricts tighter and tighter, Hyunsu's face turns red. He prepares himself for death. However, for some unknown reason, the monster suddenly releases its grip. Hyunsu is saved. He quickly looks out the window and sees the neighbor, Uncle Dusik, holding a modified gun, spotting Hyunsu. Dusik takes a hearty swig of alcohol to avoid attracting the monsters. Dusik begins communicating with Hyunsu using pen and paper. He informs Hyunsu that these monsters won't die. Even with severe injuries, they can continue to move. Moreover, if they want to save the two children, Hyunsu will have to go down and bring them up. Guided by Dusik's advice, Hyunsu sets his phone to speaker mode. Dusik explains that if the monsters come close, the phone will emit noise. Mentally prepared, Hyunsu takes his homemade weapon and resolutely opens the door. He first goes to Dusik's neighboring apartment and learns that Dusik has limited mobility in his legs. So, the task of rescuing falls solely on Hyunsu. Thankfully, Dusik is an incredibly skilled craftsman, capable of assembling even a tank with the right blueprints. Thus, Dusik modifies Hyunsu's weapon, turning it into a more powerful electric rod. Now, Hyunsu is ready to go downstairs and save the people. Meanwhile, all the residents in the apartment building have discovered the existence of the monsters. The main entrance has been sealed off, trapping everyone inside. Phone calls cannot go through, leaving the residents uncertain about what to do. Sukhayan, who runs a supermarket on the ground floor, is the first to find the switch for the main door. Excitedly, he opens the metal rolling door. A tall, thin figure was found standing outside. In the darkness, everyone was unaware of the danger. One and even picked up her phone intending to capture a video. Finally, the rolling door was fully open, and everyone could see what was outside. It was a horrifying gaping mouth. Clearly a monster, everyone scattered and tried to escape. One person couldn't dodge in time and was impaled by the monster's tongue. Within three seconds, the person turned into a lifeless corpse. After killing one person, the monster's long tongue searched for its next target among the crowd. Boon Hayak was the first to react grabbing a fire extinguisher and spraying it at the monster. The monster retreats a little in fear. Boon Hayak woke up the dazed Suk Hyun and urged him to quickly close the rolling door. Suk Hyun reluctantly moved his stiff limbs to shut the door. The rolling door slowly descended, just as Boon Hayak's plan was about to succeed. The fire extinguisher unexpectedly ran out. The monster immediately revived to full strength. One second before it could attack Boon Hayak, a courageous figure slammed into the monster, knocking it out of the doorway. It was firefighter Lee Kyung. Lee Kyung pounced on the monster but was injured in the right leg by glass shards. In a crucial moment, Boon Hayak braced himself against the rolling door, reached out, and grabbed Lee Kyung's hand. With a strong pull, the two managed to escape into the apartment. The monster's tongue reached into the opening of the rolling door but got stuck halfway. It had no choice but to retreat. Seeing the seemingly impenetrable rolling door, the monster stumbled away. With the crisis averted, the other residents of the apartment finally emerged, appearing from various corners. Suk Hyun regained his composure and immediately started complaining. However, there were more than just one monster. The area outside the apartment had already turned into a living hell, with monsters of various forms scattered everywhere. No one knew how long they would survive. Everyone received an urgent notification, instructing them to isolate anyone exhibiting aggressive symptoms such as nosebleeds and fainting. They were all in a state of panic resorting to blocking the door with heavy objects as a temporary measure. One middle-aged lady, Jean O.K., remembered that her daughter hadn't returned yet and anxiously wanted to go out to rescue her. However, nobody dared to open the door. Jean O.K.'s emotions grew more intense, but a few words from Moon Hayak calmed her down. Jean O.K. understood that the most important thing now was to wait for rescue. Meanwhile, as Hyun Soo stepped out, he encountered the invisible monster. It just so happens that there are a few bouncy balls around. Hyunsu throws them into the distance, creating enough noise to disrupt the monster's judgment. Seizing the opportunity, Hyunsu attacked and stunned the monster with his homemade electric baton, eliminating this obstacle. Hyunsu successfully found the siblings trapped in their home. Next, he planned to take them to Dusik's apartment upstairs because Dusik had enough food to sustain them for a while. However, just as the three of them reached the staircase, Hyunsu suddenly started to have a nosebleed, and it kept getting worse. This was a sign of mutation. Could it be that he was also turning into a monster? Hyunsu stood still, memories flashing before his eyes. An uncontrollable and violent force consumed his rationality. Was he going to mutate? Suddenly, a muscular monster appeared, 
Interrupting Hyunsu's mutation process, the muscle monster frantically smashes through the wall and moves closer to the two children, Hyunsu, who had regained consciousness, grabbed hold of the muscular monster's leg, allowing the two children to escape. However, he himself was kicked away by the muscular monster and received two punches in the process. Fortunately, Jisoo and Jaehyun, wielding a samurai sword, arrived just in time to rescue Hyunsu from the grasp of the muscular monster. Meanwhile, as the two fleeing children reached the stairs, the younger brother became so scared that he wet himself. The sister had to gather her courage and comfort him, but just as they turned around, a half-headed monster appeared. My sister remembered Hyunsu saying that the creature was invisible, so she covered their mouths tightly, not daring to make a sound. When the brainless monster had gone the two men were relieved. They prepared to continue going upstairs, but in the next second, the muscular monster appeared behind them, reaching out to grab the two children. However, the brainless monster returns and a battle breaks out between the two creatures. The brainless monster was defeated and thrown out of the window by the muscular monster. The siblings had barely run a short distance when the muscular monster caught up with them again. Helpless, they could only cover their eyes and wait for their demise. At that moment, Myung Suk appeared, pushing a baby stroller. Upon seeing the muscular monster, Myung Suk remained calm and told it to go away. However, the monster had no humanity and kicked Myung Suk away without hesitation. As Myung Suk fell to the ground, she caught a glimpse of her own child. She had always known that her child had died due to her carelessness, but she refused to accept it and remained immersed in her fantasies. In that instant, Myung Suk witnessed the muscular monster stomping on her child. Hearing Myung Suk's cries of anguish, the monster punched her in the head. Strangely, Myung Suk was unharmed and instead lunged at the back of the muscular monster, biting it fiercely. Her eyes had turned pitch black, indicating that she had started to mutate. Hyunsu and the others, who had caught up, were stunned by this scene. Jisoo was the first to react by attacking the muscle monster's vitals. Jaehyun swiftly followed, luring the muscular monster away. Jisoo attempted to help Myung Suk, who was lying on the ground, but she was frightened by Myung Suk's mutated hand. However, Myung Suk hadn't fully mutated. In the astonished gaze of Jisoo, Myung Suk regained her normal appearance. On the other side, Jaehyun continued running with the muscular monster in pursuit. Finally, Jaehyun reached a window. He knew he had no way back. Jaehyun raises his katana. The monster behind him is already lunging. Jaehyun leaps. The monster crashes through the window and falls. The moment of truth. Jaehyun is smart enough to save his life. The group arrived at Dusik's house. They had a less than generous dinner and they didn't know how long they would live, but until then must try to live. Meanwhile, Loon Hayak and others on the first floor didn't sit around waiting for death. Loon Hayak noticed that the power supply in the neighborhood was still functioning, except for their building. Firefighter Lee Kyung volunteered to check the electrical room. Loon Hayak seemed to have something to say, but in the end, he let Lee Kyung go alone. Lee Kyung made her way to the electrical room and turned on the power after successfully reaching it. As soon as the electricity was restored, the residents taking shelter on the first floor immediately turned on the television. They saw the president comforting everyone through a live news broadcast. However, before the president could say a few words, he suddenly collapsed. Blood flowing from his nose. He uttered, You're all doomed. And the live broadcast abruptly ended. Everyone's hearts sank to the bottom. Finally someone couldn't help but explode, thinking they were all going to die. Other side. Lee Kyung was just about to leave when she was dragged out into the darkness by a monster that looked like a spider. When she woke up again, Lee Kyung found herself entangled in spider silk. Suspended in mid-air, the spider monster approached to examine its prize but discovered that there was no one in the silk. While the spider monster was momentarily stunned, Lee Kyung seized the opportunity to escape through a ventilation duct. The spider monster quickly caught up. But Lee Kyung, agile and well-trained, evaded its eyes by exploiting visual blind spots. Eventually, she found an exit and forcefully kicked off the ventilation fan. However, before she could jump down, the spider monster caught up and wrapped its silk around Lee Kyung's neck. Lee Kyung struggled and managed to kick through the glass window. It took a shard to cut through the spider's silk to escape. The spider monster seemed to hesitate and didn't pursue her further. At the same time, Loon Hayak in the control room notified all the residents through the broadcast. He urged everyone to gather on the first floor with water and food. The only way to survive now is to stick together. Upon hearing this, Jisoo and Jaehyun decided to go down to the first floor to check if it was safe. If it was, they would come back and lead the others to safety. 
Hyunsu also decided to join them, leaving behind Dusik and a few others who had little combat ability. At the same time, Jin ok who had wanted to go out in search of his daughter, sneaked into the control room. She opened the building's iron shutter. When everyone noticed, the shutter was already fully open. Coincidentally, a female student happened to be running towards them from a distance. Jin ok recognized her as her daughter. A young soldier rushed out and reached out his hand to the female student. But the next second the soldier is run through with a ton. It turned out that the long ton monster had never left. It had been hiding in a corner, waiting for the right moment to strike. This young soldier eventually lost his life. And the female student couldn't escape either. The mood among the group grew even heavier. Lee Kyung wearily returned from the power distribution room. She happened to encounter Eun Hyok. Lee Kyung punched Eun Hyok in the stomach. She had already guessed it. In fact, Eun Hyok knew about the monster in the power distribution room, but he didn't say anything and let Lee Kyung take the risk. At this moment, the television broadcasted the news again. A military officer announced to the public that the entire country was under a state of emergency. Many citizens had transformed into unidentified creatures, and it was speculated that it was related to human desires. The mutated beings possessed exceptional regeneration and recovery abilities, but until it is completely mutated the great trauma will not be recovered. This was also the best time to kill the monsters, and the most effective way to destroy them was through incineration. The military was trying to resolve the current situation, and they urged the citizens to protect themselves and wait for rescue. Meanwhile, Hyunsu and the other two were rushing towards the first floor. However, halfway through, Hyunsu was suddenly thrown down the stairs by an unknown force. Landing in front of a girl without any warning, the girl's scream echoed through the hallway. But Hyunsu only remained unconscious for a couple of hours before waking up. And this ability revealed the fact that he was a mutant. Other residents were frightened and worried about when he might turn into monster. Some suggested driving Hyunsu away. Especially Suk Hyun, who strongly demanded to kill him, to decide whether Hyunsu should stay or go. Loon Hyok took out a pen and paper for an anonymous vote. They expected it to be a one-sided outcome, but to their surprise, the result was a tie. Suk Hyun was furious, completely refusing to accept the voting result, and he angrily overturned a table. Just then, Suk Hyun himself began to have uncontrollable nosebleeds. Now, he had also become a mutant. Suk Hyun lowered his head, wanting to escape, but he was stopped by Hyunsu. Hyunsu picked up the paper from the ground and emotionlessly uttered, It seems like karma, Suk Hyun fainted. When he woke up again, he found himself locked in isolation with Hyunsu. He immediately put on a different facade, boldly asking Hyunsu how he managed to control himself from turning into a monster. Hyunsu only told him four words, stay awake. On the other side, Myung Suk, hiding in Dusik's house, was losing control more and more. Her eyes turned pitch black once again, and she quickly took refuge in the bathroom. After an hour, the sister among the children finally noticed something was wrong. She informed Dusik that Myung-suk had been in the bathroom for a long time. Dusik realized something. He told the girl to step aside and grabbed his modified air gun, gently pushing open the bathroom door. What he saw caused Dusik's eyes to widen in surprise. What had Myung-suk turned into? Did Dusik shoot at the end? And what unexpected actions would the seemingly cunning Hoon Hayak take? This series will continue to be updated. Stay tuned, folks. That's all for today. See you in the next episode.